Hi, this is Tutor Nick P, and this is noun phrase 52. The noun phrase today is wolf whistle. Okay, let's take a look at the note. If someone makes a wolf whistle, especially a man, yeah, it's almost always a man, uh, he makes a loud whistling sound with a high rising note uh, and a low falling note. Yeah, it kind of sounds probably something like uh, that would be your typical sort of a wolf whistle. Um, yeah, so men, uh, typically construction workers or tough guys or, or laborers, uh, do this to show admiration for a woman's beauty. I'm sure you've seen this in many movie scenes, but, you know, I, I have seen this in real life, too, uh, a little bit. So, but, but especially construction workers, especially outdoor laborers, you know, when there's a number of them around. Um, if he th uh, and especially if he thinks she is sexy. Uh, however, many women find it intimidating. Well, well, some might. They might almost get a little scared or feel a little nervous, and sometimes they'll probably just walk on by quickly. Uh, and sometimes offensive, uh, they may. Okay, so different women may actually react different ways. So, like most will probably do nothing. They'll be quiet and they'll just walk on. I mean, it is uh, possible every now and then that, you know, some of them may give a dirty look to the construction workers, or, I mean, at worst, they may yell something back, or maybe they give them a middle finger or something like that. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's continue with the, uh, with the note here. Uh, there are several theories about how uh, the term wolf whistle came to be, what it is today, how to come into existence, what's its origin. Some credit a scene from an old movie to have or have not with Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Yeah, and in this, uh, in this scene, they're actually kind of arguing with each other. And then suddenly, Lauren Bacall's character just kind of leans over and kisses Humphrey Bogart. Actually, takes him by surprise. Uh, and he says, you know, uh, what did you do that for? And uh, she basically replies, I've been wondering whether... I'd like it, you know, <laughs> uh, and then, and then she goes on to say, you know, you don't have to act with me, Steve, she said, you don't have to uh, act uh, with me, you don't have to do anything, not a thing, oh, maybe, uh, maybe just, maybe just whistle, and that's, that's really where it came from, so as she walks out the door, he kind of lets out a, <whistles> kind of like that, so that's why a lot of people think it kind of came from that. Um, there's other theories too. There's others that claim uh, a wolf whistle is, is actually really a whistle to warn you about wolves. You know, in Great Britain, uh, you know, a lot of uh, shepherds used to make a really, really loud whistle. You know, the whistle where you can put your fingers in your mouth and you'd hear it for miles. And that's the way they signaled each other that, that a wolf was coming. So uh, some people believe this is where it may have started. However, let's continue here. However, believe it or not, cartoons may have had the most significant influence on wolf whistles. Uh, Tex Avery uh, made two influential cartoons, Little Red Walking Hood in 1937 and Red Hot uh, Riding Hood in 1943. Yeah, the one that Red Hot Riding Hood, I don't know if you ever remember the old movie Mask, uh, I think Jim Carrey makes fun of this because he has the, when he has the mask on, he's doing the same thing where he's, you know, he's whistling all over, you know, uh, I guess uh, Little Red uh, hot, hot Riding Hood is up there and he's like whistling and he's getting a machine to whistle and his eyes are popping out and the tongue is coming out and it's really kind of overdone. But here's the point. Uh, Avery's cartoons were shown to U.S. soldiers during World War II, and before you know it, wolf whistling was everywhere. <laughs> so maybe the soldiers picked up on this. Maybe that's how it started. So to be honest, that probably seems like the most likely or the greatest influence on wolf whistles. Now, ironically, I remember in the 1990s, so ironically in the 1990s, there was a TV show called Ugly Betty. Yeah, it was a TV show. Uh, I think it was a, a cable TV show. And the, and the girl, she supposed they purposely made her look unattractive. They put nerdy glasses on her, and she I think she was still wearing braces. She supposedly was very nice, though. She supposedly had a good heart. But there was one scene in one episode. Uh, in one episode, she had to dress up, you know, just a little sexy. Uh, and she got her first wolf whistle. 
However, she never uh, she never received one before, so she was actually flattered. Yeah, I always remember they kind of made a joke out of this because normally she's ugly and she think never got a wolf whistle. So she's like, she she got the whistle and she's turned around, she's looking around, uh, me me, and she's pointing to the kitchen, me me. You know, she was she was really happy about it because you know nobody you know hardly anybody ever thought she was sexy, uh, so they made a joke out of that. Uh, but anyway, let me know. Let me know if you ever received a wolf whistle. Uh, how, you know, if you're a woman, and uh, how would you respond? Would you get angry? Will you just keep quiet? Will you walk on? Would you think it's offensive? Will you, will you yell some dirty words back? Or would you give them a middle finger? Or <laughs> would you act like Ugly Betty and be, uh, be happy about it? I don't know. Uh, I guess if you want, you can, you can leave some comments. Uh, but anyway... Uh, thank you for your time. I hope you got it. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye. Bye-bye.